Hey, 2010 Kia Soul. And today this is a two liter, not that it makes any difference. The, I think the size of the rotors on the two liter is a little bigger than the 1.6, but otherwise everything's basically the same. These rotors are gone. The pads are close. <laughs> the pad, I mean, honestly, 200,000 kilometers almost on these uh, pads and rotors. So can't complain, mostly highway, girlfriend's car. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna remove the wheel and tire. Uh, I've got it jacked up, jack stand underneath, and I'm gonna remove the wheel and tire, put the wheel under the frame of the car, just in case anything happens with the jack stand or the, uh, the jack, uh, just for a second measure of safety, and we'll start back in a second. Okay, so the very first thing you're gonna wanna do is remove these two Phillips headed set screws. Now yours could be something different, it could be an Allen key or whatever depending on uh, another brake shop. If the brakes were done at some other time they could have put something else in. These are Phillips headed and you want to take these out first. I'm going to tap on it for two reasons, to seat the screwdriver bit and also to loosen the bolt or the screw. You may be able to get them off with a screwdriver, usually you can't. It's a fairly big head on that screw. It's not like a tiny little Phillips. All Phillips screws are not the same. <laughs> you know, you have small Phillips screws and you have big ones. You know, if you try to use a small screwdriver, you're just going to strip this screw out. And then you'll have a problem. Okay, so the two set screws are off, and uh, I'll be back in one second. We'll start removing the caliper. Okay, so the first two caliper bolts I'm going to be taking off are these two right here that hold the caliper into the uh, main body of the brake caliper or the, the part that attaches to the spindle. So they're 14 millimeter, and right here on the inside is a 17 millimeter that you may or may not have to hold to get these 14s off. So let's see if we can get the 14s off without the holding the 17s. Apparently we can. But you will be needing the 17 in order to hold it to tighten them back up. So they're just two small screws. These will be Loctited when we put them back in. Out, so I'm going to tap it with a hammer. not pounding on it, I'm just lightly tapping on it because it's, you know, it's been on there for seven years. Okay. I think we're almost off. Okay. And I'm going to hang this up out of the way. Just using a piece of coat hanger to tie it up out of the way so it doesn't fall down. You don't want to put any pressure on that brake hose. You don't want to leave it hanging. Okay, so now that that's done, see if the slider pins. Oh, this one's stuck. So we're going to have to pull it. We're going to be pulling those off anyway. But I just wanted to see the condition of everything before I pulled it off. And now we're going to take two 17 millimeters and these two bolts down here, one there, and one right there, those two have got to come off. So we'll take those two off and that'll take the main body of the caliper off with the pads. Back in a second. Okay, before I finish taking oops, just set this camera down out of the way. 
very hard to keep cameras out of the way while you're working on a car. Before I finish taking these seven, you know what, I'm just going to take them off now. Get them out of the way. You can see the pad's unbelievable for 180, 190,000 kilometers, not that bad. What we're going to right now, so we hang the piston up, is retract the piston back into its bore. Now there's the piston out, and that's where it's going to be after it's been, you know, every time you push the brakes, the, the piston comes out, and as the brakes wear down, the piston comes out further to take up that space. So as the pads wear down, that space gets taken up by the piston coming out. So before you put new pads in, you have to retract the piston in so that it can, uh, the new pads will fit or else they won't fit past that piston because they're so thick. Now you can use a pad spreader. There are special pad spreader tools. I just use an old C-clamp, it works perfectly. Just center it in the bore. Make sure you're not clamping onto the hose on the back. Let me see if this is in camera view <laughs> before I'm doing it. Okay. You would not believe how much harder it is to work on a car to make sure that the, like doing these brakes is like a 20 minute job, but filming it <laughs> takes hours to try and get the right camera angles and make sure you're doing everything so it can be seen, or hoping you're doing everything so it can be seen. So I'm just winding the C-clamp in and it's pushing the piston back into the bore. So you can see that, I'm sorry it got off a little, fell off center when I moved it, but that's just going to push that piston back until it's flush. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so there's the piston pushed back into its bore, and once I was done I just took a piece of sandpaper and gently sanded the edge where it's going to meet the brake pads, and then hung it back up with the coat hanger so that it's hanging and not hurting the hose. The rotor doesn't come off easily, just whack it with a hammer because this is getting thrown away and you don't care. And now we're going to take a wire brush on a drill and clean up all this rust in here and clean up all the crap that's left over on the wheel studs. So I'll clean that and I'm also going to paint this brake backing plate while I'm in here. Might as well because probably won't be back in here for a bit. So I'll paint that and clean this up and be back in a few minutes. Okay, so here's the new rotor, and it comes wrapped in plastic, but there's also an oil going to be on it for shipping to keep it from rusting, and you're going to have to clean that off with a brake cleaner. And there's the old and the new, and you can see this huge lip on the old one, it's about a millimeter deep, which is why they're going. They weren't actually even wobbling whatsoever, they weren't, uh, but, you know, they're quite worn down, so... Anyway, I'm going to clean these off with some brake cleaner. That's all I use is the brake parts cleaner or brake cleaner. Spray off the oil, wipe it down with a rag, and we'll be back in a second. Okay, so as you can see, the brake shield, backing shield was painted, and then the any rust was cleaned off of the hub. And I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize on that hub 
Just a bit of anti-seize grease around here just to make sure it doesn't the, the rotor doesn't stick. Not that it matters that much. You don't, don't have to do it. Um, but I just prefer to do it. And uh, bolt the new rotor on and then tighten the little screws. Don't tighten them very much. Just gently tighten the screws on. You don't need to use thread lock or anything on those. They're just to locate the rotor and keep it flat against the hub. And once the lug nuts are on there, they do it all for it. So they don't have to be very tight. So I'm going to put that rotor on and be back in a minute. Okay, so you can see this thin layer of copper grease that I put on there. And I'm just going to match up the rotor and bolt holes. Clean gloves or clean hands when you're touching the rotor. And when you're done, uh, always before you're completely done, clean off everything with uh, brake cleaner to get all of the grease off of the rotor because your brake pads do not like having grease in them. Make them much less effective. And already the gloves are getting dirty just from just from this minor bit of handling. So they're just barely, barely tight, not even enough to turn the rotor. And that is on there. Next we're going to work on the caliper housing here. So we'll be back in a minute once I get that all set up. Uh, first, actually, first you can pop the brake pads out. Pop them toward the outside. This is the inner one. You see the round marking on it. That's where the piston was pushing on this one. And this one has the brake squealer on it. This was almost at the brake squealer, but not quite. That's the wear sensor. When that squeals, it means the brakes are worn. And this is the outer pad. Again, these weren't worn all that much, considering how old they were. So now I'm going to pull these shims off, these metal shims. If yours are bad and completely rusted, you'll have to replace them. These ones just need to be cleaned up, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna soak them in some brake cleaner and then sand them down to make sure there's none of that crap on them. And I'm also gonna take a wire brush to the parts of the caliper where those move over because rust expands and it can push on, on these little shims it can push on them and push them this way and it will trap the pad in there and not allow the pads to move freely back and forth it can cause premature brake wear can lock up your brakes can seize them and make your rotors wear out so this surface has to be nice and clean and sanded off on both sides so i'll clean those all off and then we'll work on these slide pins because this one is stuck a little bit uh, when you're doing your brakes you're going to take them apart and work on them anyway but this one's stuck so that's a little bit different back in a second Okay, so the pad shims have all been cleaned up, and I just used a wire wheel on an electric drill. And I've cleaned up the mating surfaces where they go on, on the caliper body. Now, which one was stuck? Okay, this one's stuck right here, and it's a 17 millimeter. And I'm just going to have to basically turn it a little bit. It's just... I don't know, that one's really on there. <laughs> wow. That is stuck. I'm just going to wiggle that back and forth until it's loose. Because it should pop out just like this one. Now this one we're going to pop it out, hold on to the boot because the boot is inside the caliper body. You want to hold on to the boot and pull until it comes out. So that's what we want from this one. But if you can see this little bit of rust up here, water's gotten in there and loosen this up or seize this up. So I'm going to have to get this loose. I'm going to be working on it back and forth a little bit, just turning it each way, tapping it, not manhandling it, just tapping it in each way a couple of times. If I can get the boot open, which I can't because it's pushed in, I would spray some penetrating fluid in there. 
I'm just going to tap it back and forth a bit and get it loose and I'll be back in a minute to show you how to clean and grease these. Okay, so after a few minutes of fighting with it, <laughs> I got it spinning and it's coming out. So, spinning fairly freely. So I just have to get that pulled all the way out. As you can see, it's kind of, there's not really any, you can see the difference. One's a little rusty in there. So I'm going to be cleaning that up with a wire wheel before I put it back on. If it's not rusted too bad. Usually they aren't. Very rarely are they rusted so bad you can't reuse them. Very, very rarely. Just trying to push it up and turn it at the same time. There we go. Ooh. <laughs> Nasty dirty. So I'm going to clean out that bore that had it in there. I'm going to clean it out with some brake fluid cleaner or some brake cleaner as well to get that all all the gunk out of there and the rust. Clean up these pins and you can use a wire brush to clean them up. And just polish them back up. You just don't want them all chunky and rusty. Hopefully this is just hardened on. Yeah, it's just hardened on grease. So I'll clean those off and be back in a minute. I'll clean both of these off and then clean out these bores as well and be back in a minute. Okay, so the two pins are cleaned off and polished. This one wasn't that bad. This one needed a little bit of polishing. And now I'm just going to take some copper grease. You can use synthetic brake grease. You can use the non-copper stuff, just the metallic grease. This is the Permatex stuff. Comes with a little brush applicator. Just going to goop some of that down in the bore. And now slop it all over the pins. This one's slopping out. Push it in there. And you want to push it until the boot pops over top of the seal. When you pull the boot out, when you pull out, the boot should come with it. So it works like a little bellows like that. You just push it till it pops over the little lip. There is a lip there underneath the bolt head that the boot will pop over. This stuff's hard not to get everywhere. <laughs> it's goopy. Popped on, and you want them to move freely in and out of the bores. That one's a little sticky still. So I'm going to work that one in a bit more. As long as it moves in and out freely. I just need to put a little bit more grease in that bore. No, it's fine. Just creating a bit of a hydraulic lock from the grease in there, that's all. Okay. So, I'm going to clean up a little bit, get some of this grease that's on everything off. I'll be back in a second and we'll finish this thing up. apologize while I was filming putting the caliper bracket back on the main caliper bracket the camera battery pooched out on me so I put those two 17 millimeter bolts back in the back and they'll be torqued down to 65 foot-pounds <coughs> again please excuse the come on the camera just sit there foot-pounds approximately between 57 and 73 and there is thread lock around those make sure that camera's in there properly I 
Sometimes it doesn't want to stay. Hold on a second. Crap. Take your two little shim plates. The little feet on them curve in toward the inside. And those go over top of those little lugs there. The pad without the squealer on it goes on the front. That little slot just goes in over top of the little lug, like that. There's the back one. Oh, that little tab bent out in the back. The little tab like this, it bent up while I was putting it in. So I'm going to bend that back down and charge the camera a little bit more so I can finish this off. I'm just going to put this brake back in once that little tab is bent down. It's just keeping me from putting the pad in. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so the back brake pad's on with that little tab bent back. Now I'm going to take some disc brake quieting goop. This is where the two fingers of the back of the caliper touch it. Touch the pad. Just a thin smear of it on there. And then a little tiny bit. All around the face of the piston. And that'll just keep up the vibration when it's dry and not let it squeal. Unhook the caliper and slide it back in over the pads and push the little have to push the little slider pins back in. Get it over top. Little tiny bit of blue thread locker. I was hoping this camera doesn't die in the next 10 seconds. Because <laughs> we're just about done. Put that in the back. And that screws into that pin bolt. <clears throat> it screws into the back of the pin there. the head of the pin. Let's get it lined up. It does not want to line up for me. Okay, let me get this lined up and and uh, put the two bolts gently in and I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, so those pin bolts are back in and I'm just going to take a 17 millimeter to hold the head of that bolt there while I torque up the back 14 millimeter bolt to 14 or sorry 24 pounds. Of course I need two hands to do this. <laughs> Let me put the camera down. Hopefully it stays running. And same for the bottom one. And that's it. All done. Once I do the bottom, torque the bottom one on. Put the wheel back on and we are done. Thank you for watching. Oh, uh, after doing this, check your brake fluid reservoir. Make sure it's not too full because the brake fluid that's taken up that space in the piston has now been pushed back up and it might be overfilling your reservoir. Just check that. If it is, you can either suck it out with something like a turkey baster or you can dip a uh, tip a shop towel or a rag in there and let it absorb the brake fluid and then pull it out and throw it away people probably won't recommend that but turkey baster works perfectly use a straw use whatever you want to suck it out of there but just make sure your brake fluid level is good now it's not too high anyway thank you for watching
Sorry, one last thing after everything's done. Little brake cleaner. This stuff does dry on its own, just to make sure there's no fingerprints left on the rotor. I gotta spin that, put the car in neutral and spin it. Oh, well, I could spin oh, that at neutral. And get all the brake, the fingerprints off there, and I'm gonna run some uh, shop towels over the top of that to dry it off. But uh, brake fluid is, it'll evaporate. Anyway, uh, yeah, you don't want any grease or fingerprints or whatever on your brake fluid, or brake rotors or brake pads because it will stop your braking power. It's amazing, look at that stuff, just gets everywhere. Okay, I'll clean that off and uh, anyway, thank you for watching.